Good morning, McCormick United Methodist Church and those that are listening today by way of the internet. We thank you for being a part of our worship time today and uh, I'm happy that you are with us. I bid you good Sunday morning. If it is Sunday morning, if you're watching the recording, it may be another time, but we thank you for being here. If you don't know who I am, I'm Reverend Nels Ledwell, a pastor from McCormick United Methodist Church. We're recording here from our beautiful sanctuary and of course we're in the midst of still the coronavirus pandemic so no one is here but me and i'm here today to share with you god's word as we would have if it was the 29th of march the sunday before palm sunday in a church service so those of you that receive our email blast will have the scriptures and prayers before you if you do have that say this prayer as we begin our time together with me please holy god creator of life. You call us out of the dark places, offering us the grace of new life. When we see nothing but hopelessness, you surprise us with the breath of your spirit. Be with us and our neighbors in this time of despair and sickness. Remind us that beyond this time is a new day free from harm and isolation. Call us out of our complacency and routines Set us free from our self-imposed bonds and fill us now with your Holy Spirit of life, compassion, and peace. We pray in the name of Jesus, in the name of your anointed one, we pray. Amen. We go now to the scripture lesson for today. Coming to us from the story of the raising of Lazarus, is referenced all together in the 11th chapter of John, verses 1 through 45. We will get into all of that story as we have the message, but for the reading, I read to you from John chapter 11, verses 30 through 44. Let us listen now to God's word. Now, Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still in a place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up and quickly go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there for Lazarus. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed and in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the word of God for the people of God. We say together, thanks be to God. So on a day where you're all are at home, hiding, isolating from the coronavirus, I felt like today would be a great day that you could receive some good news. And what would that good news be? Well, 
If we turn back to the scripture that I just read for you today, John 11, verses 1 through 45, all together that I hope you have read before you were watching this video, you will see that this is a powerful story where Jesus, the Son of God, can defeat anything that comes our way, and that includes even death. So if Jesus can defeat death, let's just get this out of the way right now and remind ourselves with God's help, with Jesus's help, we will defeat this coronavirus as well. We will build back our nation's economy. People will be going back to work. Life will again return to some form of normal. Now, well, that, does that mean like the flu, that coronavirus will not always be around us? I suspect that it will. There will be vaccinations. Soon there will be medications that we can take. Isn't it great that we live in a nation that God has given us that we can defeat even something like a coronavirus and revive our nation? This story in chapter 11 of John is a powerful story. We pick up where Martha and Mary, who live in Bethany, friends of Jesus, send word to him that their brother Lazarus is extremely ill. Please come, they say. We need your help. Please hurry. He's sinking fast. But by the time Jesus gets there, Lazarus is dead. And he's been in the grave for four days. Now, as Jesus was on his way, we find this interchange where the disciples are a little reluctant to return back to Judea. They remind Jesus, Jesus, remember that is the place where, as we saw last Sunday, you were about to be stoned and you're going back. And in the face of all of that, to glorify God, Jesus does go back. And they, the disciples, decide to go back with him. Jesus finds and realizes that Lazarus has died. By the time he got there, as we said earlier, Jesus had been dead for four days. The family and friends had gathered, and there they were there in deep sorrow. When Jesus saw them, we approached then that shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. And then Jesus says to them, roll away the stone. Now, Martha always ready to speak out protest. But Jesus, Lord, we can't do that. There's going to be an odor, a bad odor. I love the King James Version here. It says, Jesus, we can't do that. And in King James language, it says, because Lazarus stinketh. How often is it that we don't want to do jobs that for some reason or another may just stinketh or have an odor? But Jesus says to them anyway, roll away the stone. Martha, do you not believe? And you will believe and you will see the power of God. And they roll away the stone and Jesus cries out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Charles Allen, a Methodist preacher, but he did. He came out in his grave clothes, and then Jesus once again says something, unbind him and let him go, set him free. So this morning, I want to point out to you some things that Jesus teaches us. First of all, we pointed it out earlier, that Jesus' disciples didn't want to go back. They were afraid, Jesus, they're going to stone you. And we learned very quickly that Jesus is not afraid of death. Now we know why. Because Jesus rules over death. He chases death away. He turns death into resurrection. So we rejoice in that. But here's some other good things that we learned from Jesus that I want to share with you this morning on a day we are home and isolated fighting coronavirus. John 11:35, the shortest verse in the scripture says, Jesus wept. I don't know about you, that may not impress you much, but when you think about it, 
You see here the true compassion of Jesus. He was strongly moved. Other translation says he was filled with compassion. And in the Greek, that word for compassion means he was moved all the way to the gut inside. It almost gave him a sickening feeling. And he was moved and Jesus wept. Now, some of you say, well, that's the only verse that I can quote, Jesus wept. I used it in Sunday school all the time. But let's talk about that for a minute, because I want to share with you that Jesus was not only a healer. He was also a person that was a feeler. Now, what's the difference? Well, it's like this. I have a cousin that's in ministry. And... I remember a story that I thought about him because he never liked to do funerals, but it reminds me of a story about another clergy person that I know. And he was young and he went to his first crisis with a family in his first church. He got there and the youngest child had passed away from a horrible debilitating disease. And when he got there, all the way he rehearsed the platitudes of theology that he was going to share, like the young child now is no longer suffering. You've heard these. He's at peace now. All is going to be well. God will take care of you. All of those things. But when he got there and saw the hurt and felt the anxiety and heard the cries and saw the tears of his family, he couldn't say a word. All he did was sit down on the sofa there in their living room and cry harder than they did. And he was embarrassed by that. He even cried during the funeral and he was more embarrassed. So much so that he told his district superintendent to please move me. I've ruined my reputation here in the church. Take me out of here and let me go somewhere else and start over. And they moved him. He did. About four years later, this family, the father and mother in this family, were elected to be delegates to none other than the South Carolina Annual Conference. And there they ran into their former pastor. When the pastor saw them, he immediately ducked away. He didn't want to face them again. He was still embarrassed even years later by that event. But the family saw him and they ran up to him and said, Pastor, how are you doing? It is so great to see you. We have missed you so much. And we want to share with you that while we have loved all the pastors we have had since you left, we love you the most. And much to his surprise, he said, why? All I could do when you needed me the most was cry. And they said, yes, we remember. We remember your genuineness. We remember your heartfelt love. We remembered how you sat down on that sofa and cried with us. And that meant more to us than any doctrine or theology or words that you could have ever mentioned. Any prayers or anything else. You genuinely loved us. You felt our pain and you cried with us. And that gave us more healing and joy later on than anything else. That you, a man of Jesus Christ, representing Jesus Christ, felt that much empathy for us to cry with us. Our family appreciates you very much. We will never forget how you came and cried for us when our child passed away. See the lesson I'm trying to say here? It's more than just pronouncing theological words. It's more than just saying God will take care of you and saying a prayer. Many times people that are hurting just want someone to be with them and share their pain and understanding love and empathy. Jesus wept with those he loved and he still does. He hurts for all of us. 
in pain. He understands what it is we're going through. So know then that not only is Jesus a healer and a defeater of death, he is also a feeler. He knows you and he understands you. He wept and he weeps for us even today. I remember going to Oklahoma City years after the Oklahoma City bombing. And across the street, a church there erected a statue of Jesus looking over the bombing scene there in Oklahoma City. You remember the federal building there was bombed by a terrorist. It had the statue of Jesus with his hand over his face crying, looking over that awful scene, weeping for the plight of his people. Knowing at the same time that in his healing grace, he reached out and received all of those that died into the arms of his mercy. Those that believed went on to be in heaven with him. That's how Jesus works. In the end, it is all made better in the life we have to come. So having said that, the second thing that I want you to see is Jesus went there. And he raised up Lazarus from the dead, probably to say to those in the book of John and us now what was to come. The disciples didn't have a clue. No one else did. Jesus was filled with compassion when he saw that tomb because he knew it wouldn't be much longer. He too would be in that tomb. But by raising Lazarus, he's showing us that we have a path. And it's not to death, but it's to not only death, but to resurrection. It makes death to be nothing more than a transformation to a new life. Jesus will raise you up from your grave. And not only from your grave, for Mary and Martha and the family, he raised them up from their despair. He will raise us up from this coronavirus. He will raise us up from other things that we are enduring. To the sick today, no, he will raise you up. And one day when we do experience death, he will raise us up from that as well. He is the resurrection and life if he tells us. He raised people up and he still does. And he expects us to raise people up as well. How often is it we fall victim of wanting to tear others down to build ourselves up? That's not the way of Christ. What Christ wants us to do is to build others up to his glory. To give those around an opportunity. It's sort of like a man once that was doing, another pastor that was doing his first funeral, turned to the scripture and said, whatever Jesus did, I will do. And when he went to the scripture, he discovered that Jesus didn't do any funerals. When he went among the dead, instead of burying someone, he raised them up. He calls them by name, Lazarus, come out. And the good news is, even in the midst of our despair today, Jesus knows your name. And right now, he's calling you up to raise you up. See how personal this is. See how great this is. He's going to bring you out of that tomb of despair. He's willing to share with you that you are a winner. He wants to set you free as he did Lazarus. Free to go out and hear and respond to the call of faith. To tell others your story what Jesus has done for you. He will raise you up, give you a new start, a new day, a new life, a new beginning. He calls us to raise up others. That's what we are to be about here is the body of Christ. This week, you call others to look after them. You might stop by and see them standing 10 feet away, of course, but you raise them up with encouragement. We go to the hospitals to raise them up. We call our neighbor to raise them up. We call a friend or family member not to tear them down, but to encourage and raise them up. Children, grandchildren, parents, others. 
We weep with those that are weeping and we rejoice with those that are rejoicing in that like Jesus, we raise people up and know that Jesus still does. And then finally, know that Jesus included others in this miracle. I once heard a quote that said, if you want a miracle to happen, be willing to be a part of it. Don't miss out on this. When Jesus comes to the tomb, he tells the others, roll away the stone. How often is it that we should remove the barriers out of others' way that they will have a chance to come out? Roll away the stone. But Jesus, the stone is heavy. Get help. Roll it away. Move it. Open the door. Give others a chance. Open the doors of our church to give others a chance to come and be a part so others can know, roll away the stone. In the same way, Jesus says, unbind him and let him go. Jesus could have snapped his fingers and moved the stone himself. He could have snapped his fingers and Lazarus would have had some brand new clothes instead of those grave clothes. But instead, Jesus wants us to be a part of the ministry. You roll away the stone. You unbind him and let him go. How often is it? Is a listener, is a friend, is a person that shows empathy and feeling compassion for someone else we know? Little do we realize that we're rolling away the stones. We're not only offering healing, but we're curing them with a feeling of love and empathy and understanding. We help them to come out of the grave, the tomb, to be supported, to experience the grace of God. Yes, Jesus wept, but he included others in that time of weeping. He included others in that day of a miracle, and he still does. We come to the season of Lent walking toward the grave of Jesus, walking toward the cross, giving thanks that Jesus suffered with a feeling for us that we can be healed and forgiven of our sins. And yes, we are reminded that happened on Friday, but Sunday's coming, a day of resurrection. Next Sunday, we will celebrate Palm Sunday, his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The Sunday after that, we celebrate his resurrection. Now we hear his word and we affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We offer now a prayer. Our closing prayer and our morning prayer, our daily prayer. We pray for those that are on the prayer list that you have received in your email. Especially we remember those recovering from illness. We remember Sue Gear. We remember Bud Freeman. We remember Dot Baggett. We remember John Bandy. We remember others that have been ill and sick, many on that prayer list, too numerous to name. We remember and know that God hears the thoughts and needs that you have voiced to him. He knows what's in your heart. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
For first of all, Lord, we thank you that Jesus not only heals us from our pain, not only does he want to heal us, but he also feels what is happening in our lives. He understands us. He knows us. And Lord, how thankful it is that Jesus knows all there is to know about us, yet loves us anyway and forgives us when we are wrong. Lord, in these days of coronavirus, sustain us. For those that have it, Lord, give them healing. For families that have lost those loved ones to corona, Lord, bless them. Give them strength. Receive those lost, Lord, into the arms of your blessed mercy. Be, O oh God, with the doctors and nurses, first responders, presidents, governors, politicians, leaders, Epidemiologist, all oh Lord, that are working so hard to rid our nation of this. Be with our leaders, Lord, restoring the economy back to a normal that families will have food. Be with our schools, Lord, as one day they will open again, our colleges. Be with our students, Lord, that have been displaced and are wondering what's going on in their world. Lord, remind us that in you we can find strength in the days ahead. Be with those, O oh God, that we know that are in the hospitals. Be with those, O oh God, that we know that are suffering or hurting. Give us all, Lord, strength and healing. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for the strength you have given us. Bless us, Lord, with your presence. Lead us, Lord, to better days ahead. And yes, Lord, help us to gather truly to celebrate Easter Sunday coming. Although now, Lord, we remember in these days of despair, Jesus too walked in despair. He walked to the cross to remind us that we have resurrection and life and forgiveness. Hear our prayers, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, who came to this world and taught us to pray, as we join together in that prayer saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the peace and love of God, his son, Jesus Christ, the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always and give you peace no matter where you are. Have a wonderful day. God bless. And I look forward to seeing all of you very, very soon. Amen.